Hello and welcome to this tutorial on how to connect your AIM hardware device to the Race Studio 3 software over Wi-Fi. Now this is applicable to many of the AIM hardware devices that are Wi-Fi enabled. Some aren't and connect over USB and in that instance as we go through this tutorial we will focus on where a USB connection makes sense but today's conversation is going to focus on Wi-Fi. So here I have Race Studio 3 open and I also have an AIM Solo 2 uh, switched on and ready to connect. What you'll find is that most AIM devices that connect over Wi-Fi as default will be access points, which means they will be their own Wi-Fi networks. So when you actually connect your PC or your computer to the AIM device, you're actually connecting to a Wi-Fi network. To do that, what you'll do up here is you'll click on this Wi-Fi button and you'll see a series of different Wi-Fi networks that are there. Some, for example, that are already connected to right now. But what we're going to do is we're going to scroll down to this bottom part where you'll see there's an AIM Solo 2 um, AIM Racer at the end. And I'll explain that AIM Racer bit in just a minute. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click on Connect. And what that's going to do is it's going to tell Race Studio 3 to connect over Wi-Fi to the AIM Solo 2 that's there. As it connects, one of the things that you're going to notice happens is that some of the buttons that are in Race Studio 3 that rely on an internet connection to the, to the web will actually deactivate. So you'll notice up here that the ability to download new software or firmware, uh, the ability to connect to the AIM website have been grayed out. And so those are no longer connected. And the reason is, is that you're connected to the device and the device is acting as that Wi-Fi access point or the network. To know you're connected, the easiest way to know is up here. You'll see uh, this is where you go to a list of devices and this button will change and there'll be a little green arrow. That means that the Air Race Studio 3 software is connected to the device. If I click there, you'll notice that this AIM Solo 2, um, which I've named AIM Racer, and I'll explain why I've done that in just a minute, will actually show. And if I click there, what it's going to do is it's going to give me a lot of information now that's available about that particular device. These are live uh, pieces of information that are coming in from the device. This happens to be GPS only, so they're GPS channels. But for example, if you're connected to an a, a dash with multiple channels coming in, what you'll find is that you'll see things in here such as um, RPMs, for example. And uh, if the engine's running, you'll be able to see um, information such as oil pressure and water temperatures. All of this will be available here in the live measures, which you can actually record if you want to. Now, as you're connected here to the AIM Racer, there are other things that we're going to talk about in other uh, tutorials. For example, how to get tracks uh, onto your device, and this will give you a list of all the tracks that are on the device, or how to download the data from your device. We'll go into that in more detail later on, but this is talking about Wi-Fi. And so for most people right now, by connecting this way as an access point, this is the primary way that people will download the data. You'll go in, you'll download your data, and then you will move on. And so um, for a lot of people, this is all you need. But there are some more advanced settings that I want to talk about in this video that may be applicable to everyone. But for the most part, if you just want to download your data, click here, connect to the device, click on this button here, and then click on the connected device and download the data. Very simple. But one of the things that we want to be able to do is to look at the fact that there may be scenarios where you're downloading data from multiple devices. And that's here where I've changed the name from the default, which will be a long um, detailed description in terms of numbers um, of the actual device, of so the device's actual number. Um, but I've changed it here to say AIM Racer. You could change this to your name, the name of your car. And the reason you want to do this is if, for example, you're downloading data from multiple devices, you can see, oh, that happens to be this person's device versus this person's device or this car versus this car. That becomes even more useful when you get into the more advanced way of being able to connect this device um, and download it. And that's where you move from having this device as an access point to letting this device connect to a Wi-Fi network. Now, the reason you may want to be able to do that is if, for example, you're in a scenario where you may want to be able to download data from multiple devices at the same time. You may be a race engineer and in the paddock or back in the race shop, you may have four or five cars that you want to download the data from all at the same time. That's why having you know, a device name unique to the car or the actual unit may be useful to be able to know which um, device you're downloading from. Because if you were on a Wi-Fi network, there will be multiple devices listed here that you could just click in and out of and find the data. 
To be able to connect to a Wi-Fi network, what you'll do is you'll click on here and change it from access point to existing network. By doing so, you can now add in your network details. So for example, the one I'm doing here, this is in a house. So uh, that's the name of the uh, network. I'm gonna put in the password here, which I won't read out um, on the video. And uh, that will connect it to the network. Now, the final thing you want to do is set up a device password. Now, this is really important because you don't want to be in a position where, you know, you lose the security and control of the configurations and information on the device. For example, the data might be intellectual property to you. There may be configuration settings that you want to have specific to your particular vehicle. So you want to be able to put in a password as well. So I will add a password in here. And then if I click on transmit now here, not only if you change the name, but all these settings, if you click on transmit, that's going to actually then click through, send the information. What it's actually going to do is it's going to tell you that this network is now disconnected and it's going to start configuring and starting to think through to how it's actually going to connect to the new network. Now, what it's doing right now is it's actually trying to establish a connection with the device, um, but it's not having any success because the device has moved from being an access point to actually being in a position where it's now connected to a network. So what we need to do is we need to connect to that network. So if you remember, uh, this was the network name. If we click on this network now, over time, and sometimes these things take a little bit of time to be able to work themselves out, and that's just how you know these devices are working and talking to each other. But what the first thing that you'll notice is that we actually have, um, these have now become um, active again. So the web updates and the connecting to the website and the ECU history. But you'll also notice that now we have this network, and you'll also notice that the actual AIM Racer Solo 2 has now showed up. If I click on that, it'll take me through to the existing information. And now what's going to happen is anytime I want to be able to connect to this device and I'm within range of that Wi-Fi network that is there, the laptop will stay connected or the computer will stay connected to the Internet and the Solo 2 will also connect to the same Wi-Fi network. So that's particularly useful if you are in a position where you want to be able to download. Where this doesn't work, and a word of caution, is if you're in a situation whereby you may not be in range of that Wi-Fi network and you want to be able to download the data quickly, that's where Access Point makes the most sense because to be able to go in, change the settings, and go back again if you're not on that Wi-Fi network can take some time. So a word of caution in setting this up is make sure you've always got that permanent Wi-Fi network that's available to be able to download this because the device, in this case the Solo 2, will always keep the memory of one setting versus another. So that's the setup that we have here. Um, very useful in two senses. If we go back to that original setup for most people, just accessing the unit as an access point, downloading the data, disconnecting and connecting back to the internet is what most people will do. But if you do want that more advanced Wi-Fi setup, there is the opportunity of connecting to an existing network. So that's it for this video. Please give it a thumbs up if it was helpful to you. Please also leave a comment below if you want to let us know your thoughts. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the little bell icon to be notified of future videos. There's a lot more content to come. Thanks for watching.